So the other thing is happening is a lot of shop, comic shops are feeling the pinch in America and obviously around the world. Italy would be feeling it hard. Uh, so comic shops are basically saying we're in trouble and they've been in trouble for about 10 years. And uh, because what happens with um, like the big, uh, like with comics, by the time they arrive in New Zealand or Australia, outside of America, you can't send it back. Once you bought it, they're yours. You cannot send it back. You might be able to get a discount, but you can't send it back. So what's happened is in America, all the, like say, Image and some of the um, IDW have said, we will fully, fully refund all your unsold comics during this time. Because guess what? People can't go buy it. So because they can't go buy um, buy their comics, shops are feeling the pinch because they live day to day. Um, they look week, week to week. They got to pay to pay their um, workers week to week. A couple of them just said, hey, we're going to close for two weeks. And next thing they said, we're on lockdown. They said, we're going to close indefinitely. And the sad thing is that the biggest, two biggest companies in the world, Marvel, DC, said, no, we're not, we're not doing returnables. We're not going to fully refund. Are we just going to give you discounts up to 30%? Yeah, no, uh, even though you guys are going to close, we're not worried about you. We don't. Yeah, because that was basically their thing. Like, oh, we're going to have great discounts. Talk to us one on one. It's like, does that mean because I'm a smaller shop, you're going to give me less discount? But if I'm a bigger shop, you're going to give me a bigger discount? Or does it determine on how many workers I have? Or does it determine how many family I have? How many children I have to feed? Or how many children my workers have to feed? Is that what it's determined? So people really ripped it into Marvel and DC. And this is basically going to hurt them hard. People have already said, you know what, we're going to support other smaller... I know I uh, from what Alterna's doing, Alterna was hard out going, guys, you two guys need to speak up and start, you know, to Marvel and DC, you guys need to speak up and start thinking. Because Alterna's like us, we're a smaller company like them. They're slightly bigger. Uh, it's Alterna Comics. And we've always, Risings and Comics have always, and I say we because I'm part of Risings and Comics, is that they're one of our publishers and I'm, and I'm you know, I'm one of their um, division heads. I talked to Hawk, who's the CEO there yesterday on Facebook, uh, on Skype, and I said, what are we doing? What are What is our offer to stores that carry our books? He said, we have always had a right of return. With everybody that's in for, uh, invoiced with us, that have a carrier invoice with us, and he said, be clear, everybody that carries an invoice with us, we have a right of return, that we we will buy back whatever is isn't sold. And I said, cool, because that's what I think we should do. And so I posted uh, and said, yeah, this is what we're doing. You know, uh, Rides and Comics and behalf of Rides and Comics, some comics is what we're doing. And and in a way, it sort of showed that the indie companies are more, because we know as independent companies that stores help us hard out with our print comics. Because when we print our comic, it, it, people, subscribers get them. But a lot of people, a lot more people see them when it's in the store. When it's sitting on the shelves, when you walk past, you go, oh, what's this? Huh, okay. Go have a look at something. Oh, maybe go try that out. Yeah. And so on, or tell their friends about it. And that's a bigger, bigger market for us. And I hope that you guys will go to risingsandcomics.com and support us in this time. Because when you buy from us, hey, we're, help, we're making, uh, if you go to, like, if you're buying from the stores that carry our stuff, you're helping them, but you're also helping us do some more as we get through this. It's going to hurt us in the short term. Hopefully, it won't hurt us in the long term. But by doing it, but hey, we want to be there with the comic stores. And as a comic, former comic store owner, I know what it's like. Right? So I've been saying, so I was on Twitter saying, hey, I understand what these guys are going through. I know how difficult it is to have piles and piles of comics that you can't get real that you know that 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 trash comics that you that i as a comic store owner thought they look good the covers look good the story blog looks good then they come in it's like Ugh, this isn't where they're supposed to go so when they do that you sort of get the idea that hey look they're not really supporting those small guys they've been basically like, they want to go digital, digital 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 they want to go to walmart they want to go to library that's their cool thing for that's a cool thing that they're always thinking about right now with DC and Marvel. Library and Walmart. 
because GameStop has stopped um, GameStop has stopped carrying comics in America, and GameStop looks like they're going to be closed. And they are and uh, talking about comic stores closing, Valiant Comics, the guys who just put out uh, in partnership, I think with Paramount, Bloodspot. They are out of money, it seems, because they basically said we're going to lock down for four months, uh, uh, for a whole month. Everybody, put your pen and paper down. We got no money to pay you guys. So yeah, that's sad. That is sad, and this could be the the death knoll, the tenure that's been coming. The you know the banging on the drums that hey 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 hey. hey. You know, the cry wolf type thing, the, the sky's falling. This could be the sky that falls on the comic industry, mainstream comic industry. And ho and hopefully, not for us as independents, you know, as we're just beginning um, with Plunge. Also, uh, I think um, Rises and Comics has been around for 14 years. I think it's important right now that smaller, the companies that are supporting this, supporting the stores, are supported as well. And um, I speak as a creator, as well as an owner, as well as a division head, as well as part of, being another, of another company. Is that we want to last, last the course, right? We want to be there for the end, end of the mile, right? We're going to be at the finishing line when we're through this. The only way we're going to be there is if people support the stores. And if they get online and support those, buy from those stores online, and say, hey, we'll pick it up when it's when this is over, but we'll pay you now. We'll keep our we'll keep our subs going, you know. But sadly, DC and Marvel don't care, right? These guys and these guys don't care. So yeah, the other thing why the comic stores are um, hurting and the comic industry is hurting is because you got people like Dan Slott and Gal Simone. I got attacked by Gail Simone online this week because I said, well, she's trying to play both fields. After 10 years of attacking people, now she's trying to say, call it truce. And it's like, okay, that's cool. But I think you should apologize for the 10 years of attacking customers, of attacking the comic book industry. Um, of, sorry, not industry, of customers, of fans, of, 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 um, of your patrons, people who just only bought Marvel Comics or only bought DC Comics. We didn't even care about all the smaller guys, but only like me, right? When I was in my in the nineties and late eighties, when I was buying comics, all I was buying was two thousand AD and Marvel comics. They didn't even care about Superman or anything to do with DC for about six whole years. That's all I spent all my money on. Thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of my income, I spent on Marvel. Now I feel like I regret it because now for the last ten years they've just been destroying the whole industry by people like Dan Slott and Gil Simone and anybody else they've, they've got in there. They just don't really care about the stories. They don't really care about how they treat people. Like Dan Slott basically said, like he just went hard on politics last week. He just said, if you, and I've mentioned this before, if, you're, if you voted for Trump, what has that got to do with you as a comic book person? All right? For me, I don't like Trump. And I do, and I like Trump. Like I don't really understand. Uh, I don't like his Twitter thing, rants and stuff. But I listened to entire, entire. I like like yesterday. I spent an hour and a half listening to his thing. I was like, okay, okay, cool. I get where you're coming from. Cool. And so I put that aside. I don't go. You know, even with Alan, I just said, I listened to you. Cool, cool, cool. I just wish you had done it earlier. Cool, cool, cool. Right. Uh, I voted for you last time. I'm not thinking about voting for you next time. Because I wanted you to build houses, you decide you wouldn't build houses. That sort of thing, right? Uh, and so, but I am not going to get out of there and say, if you voted for Jacinda, I'm not going to, you're a piece of such and such. That's a horrible way to be in, in customer service. Basically, that's what we are. As, as artists and creators, we're in customer service. We are selling a product that we love and appreciate. And we some of us have entire lives I mean I've spent since I was like seven loving comics by the time I could spend money on comics was around about 86 I always spent money on comics right so you you're talking about 30 odd years of spending money on comics and then you have 
these guys tell you you're a piece of such and such or f you if you're such and such and girl simone basically i, I put a post up like i said and it's gone I, don't, I couldn't find it on my twitter again i think she deleted it weird anyway she was talking about like how um you know because she's been abusing everybody and i mean by everybody anybody who's a fan of comic books hey jace uh Oh, sorry, um, Cara, I forgot to read your tweet, I was, um, your comment. So Wellington, like everywhere, everywhere, everyone are being idiots, but getting ready to like, yeah. Sorry about not reading that, bro. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, you know, we're in customer service. We, 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 we spent months, or like me, I spent years, you know. Oh, well, over a decade working on Incredigirl. Because, you know, for about almost like five, six years, I put it aside on working on it. I mean, it took us now for almost five years to get to Red Dot. You know, um, some of the other comics are older. Some of the older stories that I'm going to be putting out are older than that. Maybe about 15, 16 years. Some, well, the circle I wrote when I was at film school, I wrote it as a film first, a script for a film. And then I turned it into a, movie, a, sh um, a feature film, right? And then then I went back and said, oh, what am I can't do anything. I'm, I'm working too much. I don't have time to make films. So I'm going to decide to make a comic book. And here we are now. Yeah. So the idea is, if you know, um, when you're creating something, it takes a lot of time and effort and you put a lot of energy in. The last thing you want to do is go and crap all over, your, all, all over the people that would want to buy it. That are thinking about it that might tell their friends about buying that friend might want to buy it that might buy it they might tell somebody else about it it's it's a, it's a pyramid it's a downhill pyramid to a bigger 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 thing but you, if you spend years and years crapping on people online on twitter and then say guess what i'm gonna call it truce bro you know what i'm just gonna call it hey hey so i i said to her are you now playing both fields out of the blue she jumps on there and goes, and so these are your leaders? I'm like, these are the people you listen to? I'm like, wait, what? It was, a, it was a question. Are you playing both fields? It's a legitimate question, right? Are you now, after 10 years of hounding and abusing and calling people racist, calling them xenophobes, calling them Nazis, now you're going to be nice to them? without even apologizing. You could have come online and said, hey, look, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I've hurt the industry. This is what they've done for 10 years. They've legitimately hurt the industry. And now you're going to play the field. That was my question. And then she basically, and I said, she, she thought I was comic skate. I'm like, dude, I'm in New Zealand. I've only just started doing this thing. How am I comic skate? I've listened to guys who comic skate and understand. I actually appreciate some of the things they're saying. I think they're pretty cool about some of the things they're saying. Some of the things, no, nah, I don't like groupthink. I really, really don't like groupthink. And I said, look, I don't appreciate the fact that you're thinking that I'm them. And you're trying to lump me as them, even though I'm not with them. And even though if I might agree with some of their points, I'm not into groupthink. So you should have read my bio, Miss Simone, before you started coming at me. And then she, I think, she basically deleted the, the tweet when she realized she was wrong. She didn't apologize and say, hey, I was wrong. And this is a problem with when you, when you, you know, I've apolog I, I will always apologize unless I'm not, unless it's an opinion that I stand by. And sometimes I will stand by my opinion hard if I, and even if you say I'm wrong, I will appreciate your comment, me if I'm wrong. but that's principles. If I say I don't like, um, Miss Marvel comic uh, the movie and I'll never watch it you can't say watch it watch it watch it you, you're you a horrible person for watching it's like not watching it I'm like but I'm not telling you you're a horrible person for not watching it and this is what they do so they get on there and they go you're a horrible person you're this and this and you're this all day long she could have just said hey yeah yeah I, um, I apologize for the way I've been going on you know that's, and I'll go, yeah, cool, that's cool, and leave it. Because so most of the times I make comments, I just don't even bother reading the replies because I think it's not, it's just my opinion, and everybody has an opinion, and that's okay to have an opinion. 
Um, and the thing is, if you're putting it out there, stand by it. And I think, hey, Rico, Rico said that to me. Like, if you're going to put anything online, if you're going to swear online, if you're going to say things online, stand by it. If you're not willing to do it, then if you're not willing to stand by what you're saying, or if you regret it, apologize. If you're if you are not willing to stand by what you're saying, say it. And if you realize later on that it was a mistake, apologize. People appreciate apologies. And, you know, that's cool. And I think Gail just, you know, after 10 years of ruining her her uh, her customer base, people not, and people, there are people that won't buy her comic books. I like some of the work she's done. I have, I actually met her. And I've had her sign my Birds of Prey number eight, where uh, Nightwing um, is it Tim Drake and uh, Birds Birds of Wing um, Birds of Prey um, Rico uh, kisses Barbara Gordon, and he's and it's a great cover for that. She wrote, you know, she came up with the whole, the whole Birds of Prey thing way back in two thousand, early two thousand, and I got it for fifty cents because nobody wanted it. And I got it for 50 cents and I ended up seeing her in 2007. I got it signed and I was like, yay, you know, cool. And here we are 13 years later after meeting her, she's like trying to attack me on Facebook for um, Twitter for like, asking a question and without even checking who I was. And, you know, usually if somebody replies to me, I always go and check and just to make sure where they're from, you know, because in my replies, I want to make sure that I'm replying specific to their country or to their fandom or you know if somebody's talking about star wars i gotta make sure i know what i'm talking about with star wars and such on because it was who wants to know? who wants to just complain about stuff they don't have anything to do with or not appreciative of it 